how much? I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Come on, my arms are aching up here. And my uh, wallet's aching down here. <laughs> it's me that has to throw the money away, you know. Why don't we just forget it? You know you're not built for making reductions. A modern shopkeeper has to give reductions to get the people in. Well, how much? 28p. Are you sure? <laughs> get it rid of 28 p p p Nippy. There's a tinge of metallics in the air, but, but at least it's fine. It'll be a nice, nice day for the wedding. How can you tell? It's still the middle of the night. <laughs> Floodlit wedding. There's a novelty. Ah. One of these uh, days, Granville, you'll be going to my wedding, eh? Oh, no. Hang on a minute. You'll be looking after the shop. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll bring you back up a piece of bridesmaid. <laughs> you close the shop on your own wedding day, surely? Close the shop? It's easy to see you've got Hungarian blood, Granville. You've got restless uh, gypsy feet, you know that. And your eyeballs are none too steady of a morning either. <laughs> I don't know why you persist in this attitude. You're always angling for the time off. Yeah, you know, I never get any, though, do I? Never have any time to go out with girls. Listen, all the girls in the area know that your evenings are free. Oh, I know. With what I get paid, they have to be free. <laughs> anyway, what? What evenings? We don't close here till nine o'clock at night. One day, Granville, all this will be a yours. A lock, 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 stop and back. <laughs> I'm always telling you this. Yes, I know. Every time I ask for a rise. Anyway, supposing I wanted to get married. <laughs> <laughs> Why should you want to get married? What have you been up to? No, no, I haven't been up to anything. Damn it, I don't let you out till the nine o'clock. You shouldn't have had time. I haven't had time. <laughs> well, the time I get where all the girls are, it's like arriving late at the market. All the best goods have been snapped up. All that's left is the overripe stuff that everyone's been prodding and poking about. <laughs> anyway, don't worry about me getting married. It's just a hypothetical question. Hey, you keep your hypotheticals under control, you. <laughs> what kind of age are you to be getting married? I'm old enough. I've been voting for ages. Yeah, and look at the mess the country's in. <laughs> you can't do better than that. I advise you to stay single. I feel ridiculous at my age. Look at me, the virgin grocer. Them two that's getting married today, they're younger than me. Look, there's plenty of time. I'm only just coming round to the thoughts of marriage at my age. I oh, know, and if you don't hurry up, thoughts of marriage is about all you'll be capable of. <laughs> I am hurrying up. My fiance in yonder bedroom and myself are just waiting until her dear old mother can get her settled somewhere else. Oh, yeah? Like where? Well, the crematorium. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell the nurse you said that. You keep your virgin trap shut, you. <laughs> she would kill me if she heard me say that. She's very fond of her dear old mother, you know. I stand over at the bedside sometimes and watch her patiently ministering to that her dear, for a frail old lady. I get this lump in my throat. It's her mother's elbow. Oh. 
<laughs> she can't stand me, you know. She sits up there in a pink woolly bed jacket, spitting biscuit crumbs, <laughs> doing this impersonation of someone who's going to live forever. <laughs> As a consequence, her nurse Gladys and I have to snatch what moments we can of her privacy. Here, come and help me carry the ladder over. Come on. <laughs> You can't knock her up this time in the morning. Well, would you care to rephrase that? <laughs> Supposing she's been up all night delivering babies. You just stand here and hold the bare bottom of this ladder. <laughs> what are you going to hold the bare bottom of? <laughs> what if we get a customer in the shop? Well, you'll have to go over and serve, won't you? What about the ladder? Well, if I'm halfway up, it'll leave it where it is, you silly beggar. <laughs> Who's going to hold it? Oh, I shall be all right when once she opens her window. There must be all sorts of little places that someone nimble can gain if her finger hold, if my memory memory serves me correctly. <laughs> Just passing. <laughs> you have a bosom, nurse Gladys, as, as soft as goose down, you know. Shut up, you fool. Of a size ideal for oven ready to chickens. <laughs> you dozy barn pot waking me up like this. I thought you were an expectant father. Hey, well, listen, I'm a game if you are. Hey, <laughs> you wake me, mother. Oh. She already thinks you're a lunatic, and she's right. Look at the time. You look at what you want, I'll look at what I want. <laughs> And then, then that's just what I want there. Right then. Oh, oh, careful. Oh, Granville, are you? Where's Granville gone? He's back in the shop. We've got customers. Well, I just came to say that we're going to our wedding today, my love. I know that, you great fool. It's not for hours yet. Go home. Oh, no, I just wanted to check on your bread order. <laughs> Is it there two large whites? <laughs> No, it isn't. It's a small farmhouse. Oh, uh, how romantic. <laughs> Nurse Gladys, I have appealed to you. Not at this time of the morning, you don't. Go home. No, no, don't shoot it. I shall fall. You'll be all right as long as you land on your wallet. Oh! <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? Oh, to take my advice, Granville, and never get your hand caught in a state registered nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it sounds like old uh, Bristow on his motorbike. Oh, that's what I call a motorbike. We I had a motorbike like that. Now, now, Granville, you have full use of the company vehicle. <laughs> oh, yes, here he comes. Look, a tango red leader, the bandits at nine o'clock. <laughs> he looks like Action Man on his day off, doesn't he? <laughs> Morning, Mr. Bristow. <laughs> Speak to yourself, Arkwright. Do you ever get the feeling, Granville, that there's nobody inside that lot at all? <laughs> morning, Mr. Bristow. You see what I mean? He's got completely vacant in there, isn't he? Good morning, Mr. Bristow. Morning, morning Mr. Mr. Bristow. <laughs> yep. Hello. Anybody in there? Is there anybody in there? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bristow. <laughs> oh, yeah. What? What's he say? What's he on about, there, Granville? Oh, I can't tell what he's on about at all. Well, sounds like somebody who's got his head stuck in a Russian wrestler's armpit, doesn't he? <laughs> hey, but watch his lips. See if you can see his lips move. Go on. No, no, no. I can't see anything. It's his, it's his visor. It's tinted. You see. Oh. Well, well. Why doesn't he open his lid? 
Oh, I think he is trying to open it, but it's not moving. <laughs> I think it must be stuck. Stuck? Yeah. Oh, dear, I hope he can uh, breathe in there, Granville. Hey. No, I expect he can breathe yeah, all Yeah, well, right. if you're not sure, see if he's got going a funny colour. <laughs> well, I can't see what colour he's going. See, it's his visor, it's tinted. Through this, he looks black. Black? Black? Hey, go, get him out of here. Come on. <laughs> Come on. He'll, no, he'll be much happier on the pavement. <laughs> what will he be happier on the pavement for? Well, he... Wait, listen, keep quiet. We, we are in dead peril, insurance-wise, if he dies on the premises. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's his last words. And hopelessly scrambled. They're not his last words. They are in here. Get him out. No. <laughs> he is not suffocating. It's just stuck. You made him jerk his head back so fast he jammed his visor shut and, and that won't move. All right, now tell you what I'm What are you going to do with that? <laughs> I'm just going to give it a little attack with that, Mr. Bristol. That'll probably loosen it. Get your helmet on the counter, will you? Yeah. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on, Mr. Bristol. Don't worry. I'm not going to do it that way round. You're all right. Have you seen me, the mouth of just... Well, there goes a, a regular order for half a dozen razor blades. <laughs> Basically unattractive to women. I mean, I may be small, but I'm perfectly formed. <laughs> well, that's a useful then, isn't it? You can get under them at bottom shelves with your duster. <laughs> it says here that the Scotland Yard are looking for a very a small man with one eye. If he's that small, you think they use him with both eyes, <laughs> isn't it? I know nothing about women. I wish my mother had kept a diary. Only the dull girls keep diaries. The other kind that they don't get time. <laughs> hey, you know that Mrs. Bamforth up at number 19? Do you know that she's got 12 children? Mrs. Ba Bamforth lives at number 12. Oh. Well, she's got 19 children then. <laughs> 90. Her husband, you know, is a bully and an idler and a, and a drunk. Why would she want to have 19 children with him? Oh, I don't know. She said she was hoping he'd get lost in the crowd. <laughs> Well, you can keep away from there. There's something slipshod about a woman who allows herself to have 19 children. I don't know how he had time to go to work at all. He didn't. He was on the national assistance. I'm surprised he wasn't on her crutches. <laughs> I bet she doesn't need to keep a diary. Hey, 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 hey. Never mind the daydreaming. I don't want her flat iron marks all over them in her new trousers. All right, all right. Don't worry. It's a lot easier to press than your old pair. Oh, dear. They were so shiny that trying to iron them was like taking a bobsleigh down the crest of runs. <laughs> yes, they were a bit uh, slippery towards the end. Uh, towards both ends. <laughs> All them years of a rubbing up against the nurse like a Gladys Emanuel. Mm. Hey, what happened to that old suit of yours, anyway? Oh, she made me give it to a war on want. There's some poor native tribesman in North Africa at this very moment, no doubt, wearing a blue pinstripe suit. <laughs> Wondering why he keeps a sliding off his camel. <laughs> dear, oh dear. I ain't hiding your claws, but can hardly breathe for the smell of mothballs. Why do you put mothballs in a new suit, Eddie wrote? You do know that you're the last person in England to use mothballs. You do know that, don't you, That might bring a sigh of relief to the average moth, but I don't see why you're crowing about it. That warehouse is full of boxes and boxes of mothballs. They're not shifting. And you know why they're not shifting, don't you, eh? Because nobody wants to buy any mothballs anymore. That is why. Nobody buys mothballs anymore because nobody sells mothballs to anybody anymore. And you're one of the nobodies who's not selling mothballs to anyone anymore. <laughs> I mean, a, a decent shopkeeper should be able to sell anything he, be, he puts his own mind to. You're going to make people want them. You've got to create in the public the desire for a, a decent mothball. Don't worry. Anybody who gets near you at the wedding today is going to get all the mothballs he's ever likely to desire. <laughs> That's what we need, you know, more a strategy and, and a sales planning instead of sitting about half the morning undoing my motorcyclists. Uh, Mrs. Fielding thought you were going to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like killing him when I found out all he wanted was a flint for his lighter. <laughs> One flint. One flint. I had to split a pack. You know that.
then, is he? Aye, for a couple of hours while he goes to the wedding. Wedding? Oh, with a nurse. Her niece is getting married today. Well, she has my sympathy. <laughs> oh, come on, Mrs. Blewett. Marriage can't be all that bad. Not at the beginning, anyway. It's very depressing the way people talk about all the things that I'm looking forward to. I mean, there must be some miracles still left in life. <laughs> oh, there is. I mean, for a start, it's a miracle you haven't just poked my eye out with that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I shan't be having any more boiled ham until your hand's steadier. I can't afford boiled ham unless it's cut unemotionally. <laughs> Give me four of them tea cakes. Four tea cakes, aye. Well, I'm safer with tea cakes. Right. You can't go wrong with any tea cake. Hey, hey! <laughs> oh. Look at that, Bill. Oh. You're a back of nerves. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. It's, it's me age. I've just reached that stage in my life when you're supposed to be all sexual tension and raw edges. <laughs> you know, you try to talk to people and they think you're weird. Calm yourself, Grant, Bill. Nobody thinks you're weird. Yes, they do. They do. <laughs> The minute you try to have a frank conversation about things that really matter... Here! I'm hmm? not having them. They've been kicked all over the floor. No, no, I'm not going to sell sell these to you, Mrs Blewett. That's unhygienic. I'll sell these to Mrs Tattersall. <laughs> Why is it that people can never communicate deeper than talking about, well, the government or her at number 17? Will she find true happiness with her new fitted carpet? Oh, I don't think she stands a cat in else chance. <laughs> First start, it clashes with a three-piece suite. <laughs> now, what she should have done, in my opinion, There is... you go. Listen to you. <laughs> Mrs Blewett, we have known each other for ages. You have had seven children. Therefore, you are a woman of wide human experience. Not so damn wide. <laughs> They're all from the same stable. <laughs> but I respect your experience, Mrs Blewett. I'd be fascinated to hear about it. All females to me are a magical mystery. <laughs> Don't be stupid, Gramble. Give me a packet of them jam tarts. <laughs> Could you just explain to me why it is never possible for people just to talk to me? Because you're weird. There you are, you see? Because <laughs> I'm weird. I see... Do you want any eggs? No, what's he on about? What's he getting at now? Hey, I think I just asked you if you wanted some eggs. You keep your eggs to yourself! <laughs> what do you know about eggs at your age? <laughs> Nothing. It'd be 98 pence, please, Mrs Bluey. I'll go, Granville. Keep your shelves are well filled and don't let Mrs. Henderson bab poke the bread. <laughs> She's got an index finger which is very detrimental to a sly sloth she has, which might, uh, of course, explain the rather pained expression on the face of Mr. Henderson, I suppose. <laughs> she could go through a cabbage with a finger like that. Now, listen, be very nice to your customers, especially the awkward ones like Mrs. Bear, 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 Bear. <laughs> Morning, Mrs. Bear, Bear, Bear. <laughs> Are you sure these air nets are invisible? Oh, I'll say they are. Yes, we, we ran out of them last of Friday. <laughs> Since then, I've sold 14. <laughs> 98 pence, please. 98 pence, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. There we are, the two P change. Thank a you. A wedding, is it? Wedding, yes. You're getting a regular gad about, aren't you? <laughs> that must be twice you've been out since 1976. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Have you got a can of air freshener? Certainly, Mrs. Blewett. Well, you damn well need it. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how carefully we all the tread, Granville. Marriage, the great reaper, comes to us all. Even Mrs. Blewett went through it. <laughs> I think she thinks I'm effeminate. Well, compared to her, you probably are. <laughs> Another thing. Do you realise that I have never been to a wedding? I know, I know. Yeah, my mother had the same problem. <laughs> It's only me from over the sea, said ba 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 How did you guess? <laughs> yeah, can, can I come in? Come on, Neil, I shall be a minute. All right. Uh, 
Here. Who's been buying sugar at the supermarket? Eh? You're betrothed to a, a private grocer. Already you've been unfaithful to me with the cacao op. <laughs> it's your mother, isn't it? That's right. Shout. Wake her up, why don't you? Oh. What's wrong? Oh, that does the heart of an old shopkeeper a lot of good, that does. Do you like it? Hey, we'll walk about a bit. Oh, lovely. You better handcuff me now. That's to save a lot of arguments later, won't it? Eh? <laughs> any argument, you're going to behave. Oh. I'm not arriving at that wedding looking as if I've just been mauled by an escaped grocer. <laughs> you know, you say, see a handsome woman dressed like that. It makes you wish you were dead 20 years longer, a younger. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Keep away! Listen, what we should be looking for is a little place together, but you keep knocking me hand away, don't you? <laughs> Oh, do you want to buy some? I can get you have a lot of Oh, God, no, it's you, you weak of mothballs. I know, but that'll all blow away in the fresh air. Ah, <laughs> make damn sure it does. I'm <laughs> going numb. Good. I think I might like you numb. Supposing it does irreparable damage to me grip. I should be so lucky. <laughs> Oh. Listen, have you guys got somewhere warm I can put? put there? <laughs> Best offer I've had all day. Get in the car, you big idiot. Hey, hey, hey. Well, when are we going to go to our own wedding? Let's get this one over first. Oh, but it's not the same, though, is it, eh? Just being a spare spectator. Have you really thought about it? You must be joking. That's all I ever do is to think about it. <laughs> I'll give you an example how much I think about it. I was in the shop the other day. Hey, you must promise not to repeat this. Get on with it. No, promise. Get on with it. I was just serving Mrs Ellis with six ounces of smoked bacon. I love the association of ideas, me and bacon. You haven't heard the worst yet. What did you do? Well, I didn't realise till after she'd gone. I let her walk out through that door with six ounces of her prime smoked bacon. What had you done? I'd only to charge it for four. never have come if I thought you were the kind of woman who keeps driving men into the lay-bys. It's as bad as ever. You can hardly breathe in here. What are you doing with my trousers? <laughs> your trousers, they're worse than your jacket. You'll have to take them off. Oh, well, I must say this is turning out quite a big day, isn't it? <laughs> Get them off and hang them out the window. <laughs> I'll do that. Well, nobody's going to see you. It's a quiet road. Get them off and let's get a bit of breeze round them. I can't stand out there taking my trousers off. Someone might, might come past. Well, take them off in here. And then what are you going to be doing? Well, you needn't worry. I'm not going to do anything except sit here. I promise you I'm not likely to lose all sense of control over the sight of you in your underpants. You seem natural just taking them off in cold blood. Hurry up, we haven't got all day. Well, can't you turn your head away? I <laughs> have a view or something. Go on. Good heavens, man. My entire working life spent handling men with no trousers on. No. That's something I can't help thinking about every time you pass me a boiled sweet. <laughs> <laughs> haven't you got them off yet? No, I haven't. Yet. Have you ever tried taking your trousers off in a Morris Minor? <laughs> Could you just... Shift that gear stick a bit, or better still, and we'll warm the handle. Hang on, I'll put it in reverse. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you make a mistake now, I'm in, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> Let me get round this way a bit. What are you laughing at? It's not funny, you know. Oh, boy, I hope nobody sees this before. It's going to see it. Well, I... What are you 
you blushing for? <laughs> what do you think I'm blushing for? They needn't have seen anything if you hadn't made such a damn great production of it. Well, I'll tell you something. I shan't be much more energetic than that on my own with wedding day. <laughs> I thought it was getting cold enough with me jacket off, but this is frightening. Got the heater on full blast? Listen, I want you to promise me not even to think about marriage until I've regained full use of me uh, faculties. congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God. <laughs> I'm warning you, don't try anything. I'm specially on my guard because I've only got flimsy ones on. I wish you wouldn't try to inflame me when I'm wearing these tight trousers. <laughs> Still warm, you know. <laughs> I'm getting warmer by the minute. Just try and keep yourself in check. Well, I'll, I'll do my best. I can't promise anything when you kneel down. <laughs> I might think my prayers have been answered. <laughs> We couldn't stay for the reception, but it would have been difficult for Gladys Emanuel to have kept her top coat on all through the telegrams. <laughs> I did see her point. Just briefly as she got in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Mo frills. Just like an old fashioned chocolate box. <laughs> You'd certainly be spoilt for choice with that sort of weekend assortment. <laughs> 